All right, it's time to play Word Association here on PFT Live. And we're going to begin with a great former running back, Warwick Dunn, who now I think owns a small piece of the Atlanta Falcons, giving Devontae Freeman, Falcons running back, some free advice. Take fewer hits. First thing that comes to mind for you when you hear that. Like uh, Yoda, you know, old wise Yoda, old great, you know, sorcerer fewer, of fewer, knowledge. Fewer hits you will take. Is yes, that what you're saying? exactly right. And, you know, hey, there's two Florida State running backs. And, uh, you know, this is a great advice by a guy like Work Done. Devontae Freeman's had some injuries, and he's banged up, and he plays a physical style. Devontae Freeman thinks he's 255 pounds. That's the, the biggest problem with Devontae Freeman. And Work Done is just trying to tell him, hey, limit those car crash hits a little bit and you'll squeeze a few more years out of your career. I want to hear your Yoda impersonation because I have a feeling it's Phil Sims trying to impersonate Yoda. Oh man, I don't know if I can really actually do that. Florio is jerk, is he not? Or is he something like that? I don't know what that, he that, You know, that's Thank actually you. close <laughs> enough to be mildly entertaining. For okay. me, the response is, duh. Of course you got to take fewer hits. That's how it works in the yeah. NFL, especially at running back. You call them car crashes, and aptly so. You need to take fewer of them, and you need there are a certain number of them that are unavoidable. The ones that are avoidable are the ones you need to avoid. That's the easy solution. You don't have to prove that you're a tough guy. Every time you put that helmet on and you put the shoulder pads on, you are – implied to be a tough guy you don't have to go out there and impose your will physically that's how you get yourself injured so get out of bounds get down find a way to avoid taking hits that can be avoided we can't avoid all of them but the more of the avoidable hits that can indeed indeed be dodged those are the ones that you have to <laughs> that was avoid. a good I'm tongue trying twister not to say there. avoid <laughs> avoid you. avoid 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 the things you can avoid and don't avoid the things you can't avoid <laughs> basically you. that's my that's my advice thank you very well said <laughs> All right, moving right along. Adrian Peterson has his sights set on another 2,000-yard rushing season. That's his goal for 2019, your your word association in response to that. Uh, delusional? Okay, that's where I'm going to go with that. I mean, it's delusional like in a good way because I appreciate the self-confidence that this guy has all the time, and that's why he is you know, in the conversation for one of the greatest running backs in the history of the sport. And, you know, it's his delusions that make him continue to work and believe in himself and all that, so I'm not certainly mad the, the fact that he said that. I mean, this is what makes great players like Adrian Peterson so great. But, I mean, Darius Geis is going to be back in the fold this year. It's just, you know, uh, extra. It, I don't think it's realistic to think that Adrian Peterson could get to 2,000 yards at this point of his career. If he gets to 1,000, uh, it, it's almost as good as getting to 2,000 nine years ago or eight years ago like he did. Mine is very simple. Never bet against Adrian Peterson. I don't care what it is. If he said 3,000, I would say never bet against Adrian Peterson. Now, he's been – I remember after he got to 2,000 yeah. in 2012, his goal was 2,500. So I, there's a certain amount of delusion that I think is necessary to right. go out there and function. You have to be so confident in yourself that you do cross that line into delusion at times. That's yes. part of the swagger that you have to have in order to even get to the NFL. You have to believe big in yourself. If if you don't, who will? So, hey, he shoots for 2,000, and he ends up with 1,300. That's still a damn good year for Adrian Peterson. That's right. So I have no problem with people setting big goals and having big dreams because you don't get medium goals or medium dreams unless you have big goals and big dreams. No question. Or something. No question. Right. I'm with you there, Mike. Cowboys running backs coach Gary Brown on Ezekiel Elliott's recent run-in with a security guard at the music festival in Las Vegas where the security guard ended up on the ground. The security guard wants a, a real apology from Ezekiel Elliott, and Gary Brown says Zeke knows he's got to be smarter. Word association. Well, I'm going to go with one of the, the brilliant things you've said today. Duh. I mean, yes, of course he does. I mean, that was just such a bad look. And again, it wasn't the most egregiously bad thing ever. You know, I mean, again, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, I, I, I sur surely hope the NFL doesn't pose any fines or suspensions on him. I don't think it was worthy of that. But regardless, it was a bad luck. I mean, a bad look. He's too, too big of a star at this point of his career. He's too close to getting big time rich 
switch and changing his life and his whole family's life here very soon to be walking around some parking lot in Las Vegas in a LeBron James jersey at who knows what time of the night getting in the face of a, uh, a security guard. That's, it's just not a good look. Come on, man. You're too big of a star to be doing that. And honestly, I, I, I think they're dropping the ball right now. Like Zeke or somebody, they should do something cool on social media to make it up to that security guard. He said he wanted the apology. Maybe he's already done it. Uh, I don't know. I know Ezekiel It's a very good guy. You can't hear, you can't find Dallas Cowboy people to say two bad things about him. So I don't doubt that. Uh, but I thought it would be kind of a cool opportunity. Maybe have that guy down to OTAs and have him be a part of the team and Zeke take some pictures with him having fun. I thought the Cowboys might do something like that to kind of repair the image a little. Hey, I'm going to flip this back around on Gary Brown and say, look in the mirror. Right. Gary Brown's got to be smarter because Gary Brown knows Ezekiel Elliott as well as anyone. And the mere fact that this happened, the mere fact that this incident occurred tells me Gary Brown isn't hammering it into Ezekiel Elliott's brain the way that he needs to to avoid these situations. You are on the NFR's radar screen. Even if we disagree with the the fairness of the procedure from two years ago that resulted in the six game suspension. And even if even if there are are real flaws with how the NFL handled everything, the NFL has suspended him six games in the past. He's a repeat offender if he gets in trouble again. So it's on Gary Brown, not just to make sure that Ezekiel Elliott is at his best on the field, but to make sure that he's at his best off the field. And there's got whether it's Brown or somebody else, there's got to be a mechanism within the Cowboys organization that ensures that Ezekiel Elliott is making good decisions and not putting himself in a compromising position. And the mere fact that he was tells me somebody has failed. And if Gary Brown's going to be the one to come out and lecture to Ezekiel Elliott, I'll lecture to Gary Brown. You should have been in a position to be smarter about what it takes to keep Ezekiel Elliott out of trouble. Wow, yeah, I, it's tough. You would you would hope that they I know I look, yeah. I know that a grown ass man is responsible right. for his own life. Right. But but when you are responsible for that man and when you have a vested interest in that man being available to play for you and you know there's a history of bad decisions, yeah. allegedly or actually, then you need to make sure that you're helping him make good decisions. That's the one thing that astounds me about NFL teams, that a lot of them don't do enough to help the guys who clearly are a potential risk of getting themselves in trouble. It's gotten better in yeah, recent years, definitely. but that only makes it more glaring, Chris, when there's a guy who already has been in trouble with the league, who gets himself in a situation where he now has to sweat out what the league's going to do about this one. Yeah, no, I, I hear you there, Mike. And, and, you know, sometimes I think what you're saying is just a simple phone call every now and then. Or it's a reminder, hey, hey, it's Thursday night. I know the players got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Hey, Zeke, just checking in on you. Hope you had a good weekend. Just remind you, man, we got big things in front of us. You know, be smart this weekend. Take care of yourself, the people around you, whatever it is. Sometimes it's all of that, all you need as a player. Just one more good voice in your head before the weekend starts when you're 24, 25 years old and you're you're just thinking, oh, man, this is going to be fun. I'm going to do this this weekend, that this weekend. Man, those fun weekends can lead to some problems in a hurry. I could tell you that. I've been a part of a few of them. You never know what moment that that voice right. of reason is going to ricochet back into the middle of your brain to keep you from getting in someone's face while someone is recording you. I, and so I, I, I st I, ultimately, each individual is responsible for his or her own life. Yeah. But if you're going to have other people responsible for you and they're going to lecture that you need to be smarter, well, you need to be smarter, too, because you clearly didn't do enough to help this guy right. or he wouldn't have gotten himself in trouble in the first place. All right. Brian Schottenheimer says the Seahawks are still a running team. Word association. No school like the old school, Mike. That's my word association. I mean, first off, Pete Carroll's old school in the way that he wants to play football, running the ball, playing defense, right? They also want to get back to the old school of that's what got them to the Super Bowl and got them to the second Super Bowl that they lost and were a yard away. Should have ran the ball on that damn play too. But regardless, uh, this is the way Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks want to play football. And again, I think this is the new trend. I think we're going to continue to see in football. The old school's coming back because nobody does the old school anymore. The old school has become the new school because high school football, I go watch that. College football, I watch that. It's spread. It's the quarterback and the shotgun. And we're seeing teams like the Seahawks, the Saints, the Rams, the New England Patriots are going, oh, all these defensive players, they're so used to the spread with high school, college football. What are they, are they, do they know what it's like to have a fullback and a tailback coming 
downhill with a pulling guard and smash mouth football? The answer to that is no. And I think some of the smart coaches in football have realized that. And Seattle's going to continue to try to play the way they did when they were uh, one of the best teams in football and just ask Russell Wilson to make some magic a few times a game to get them over the edge in the pass game. My reaction is I'll believe it when I see it. Because I can't reconcile what Schottenheimer said with paying Russell Wilson a contract that is worth $35 million per year in new money. You don't need to spend that much on a quarterback if you're not going to use him. And I think there's going to be a feeling within the organization. We have to justify this money. We can't just let Russell Wilson hand off, hand off, hand off. We could get a quarterback to hand off for a hell of a lot less than $35 million a year. So, look, I, I, I don't rule out the possibility that they're just setting us up to think that they're going to run the football a lot. And from time to time, they're going to reserve the right to come out with four receivers spread out and Russell Wilson in the shotgun. As long as they don't do it from the one-yard line with the Super Bowl on the line, then maybe they'll find a way to diversify the offense a bit more. But I think that the more they can cause their opponents to think they're moving one way sure. and go the other way, that, that, that could be all the different. You know, if you just surprise people the first two or three weeks of the season, if you have your opponents thinking that you're going to be one way and you stun them enough to steal a couple of wins right out of the gates, that could change everything as the season unfolds. So whatever the yep. Seahawks do, maybe they are going to run the ball. Maybe we are going to be saying all season long, why the hell did you pay Russell Wilson so much money if you're not going to let him throw the ball more than 15 or 20 times a game? Regardless, I feel like the Seahawks are going to be a real factor in 2019. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.